Hello, kids and gardeners, mums and dads. I'd like to read you part of my new book, Rosie's Joy, The Magical Wonders Hidden in Your Garden. The sun was shining brightly and the seeds were ready and waiting. An early morning chorus of birds greeted the new day it was time for the gardeners and the bugs in the soil to get to work. Rosie rolled over in her bed and greeted the morning sun. Its bright rays filled Rosie's heart with joy. Every cell in her body danced and sparkled as she felt the excitement of a new day. A little Suli seed, our little kidney bean character. Suli seed says slowly sprouting seeds and stems are sipping sugar and sunshine. Because that's how they grow. Rosie bounced out of bed, dancing and laughing. Ah, oh, I love the sun's energy. It makes me feel so alive and energized. It was Saturday and Rosie was going to visit Nana Andrea. She wasted no time in getting into her favorite gardening clothes. Rosie flew down the stairs into the kitchen. On the counter was the bright green smoothie her dad had made for her using spinach strawberries, and fresh ginger. As Rosie sipped her smoothie, she guessed what other mystery fruits and greens were in it that helped her feel energized. Today, she was eager to learn where many of those ingredients came from. Rosie headed to Nana Andrea's house with her trowel, gloves, and wagon. Andre's garden was always beautiful, with food and flowers growing in spring, summer, and fall. Bumblebees buzzed happily with the other pollinators among the flowers, veggies, and blueberry bushes. Andre explained that the buzzing sound we hear is the bees' wings beating more than 200 times per second, making the flowers open their petals. Andrea also had a beautiful black cherry tree in her yard. And its flowers provided pollen and nectar for the wild and native bees. And the berries were a yummy delight for the berry eating birds like waxwings and robins. Rosie, did you know that without these pollinators, we wouldn't have one third of the food we eat and three quarters of the wildflowers wouldn't exist, explained Andrea. It's a beautiful example of synergy where one species helps another to survive, she added. Rosie didn't know they were that important. Without the bees, we wouldn't have food like apples, almonds, watermelon, strawberries, or smoothies. Rosie thought about some of her favorite fruits that she would miss the most. Male bumblebees have mustaches and mining bees wear pollen pants. Pollinators help a plant produce the food that other animals and humans need to eat, Andrea said. The bumblebee and other pollinators are in the keystone species because they help other species to survive. Plants must also be pollinated to produce seeds for next year's plant, said Suli Seed. Andre shared some interesting facts about the different bees in her garden. Mason bees visit 75 flowers to gather pollen for one segment in their tube nests averaging 1,600 flights per day, pollinating 90% of the flowers they visit 
within 100 yards of their nest. Bumblebees can visit 2,500 to 3,000 flowers in a four to 10 hour day with an average of 75 flowers per foraging trip. They are excellent buzz pollinators. Honeybees visit 600 to 700 flowers daily, but only pollinate about 30 of them because their purpose is to collect nectar for their colonies of 50 to 60,000 bees. Today, Andre and Rosie are planting carrot, pea, and avada seeds, not to mention spinach, lettuce, and arugula, perfect for their smoothies. It surprised Rosie how tiny the seeds were, especially the broccoli, which is the size of a pencil dot. The garden soil was healthy with rich organic matter, thanks to the worms and other bugs. Generally, colors that indicate good soil are dark brown, red, and tan. Dark brown suggests the soil has a good percentage of organic matter. Worms, snails, slugs, millipedes, and microbes munching on dead leaves and compost create that healthy soil, perfect for growing yummy veggies. And Suli Seed says, worms are the best composters. Let's find out more. Unknown to most people, a hidden world exists beneath the soil surface that most humans can't imagine. Suli and her worm pals had a lot to teach Andrea and Rosie. Worms are the best friends of seeds, plants, and humans. Their tunnels create air spaces and break up compact soil, preventing flooding and soil drying called droughts. As a result, roots can reach deeper into the soil to obtain nutrients. Our yummy diet consists of dead animals, insects, rotten fruit and veggie scraps, eggshells, bacteria, fungi, nematodes, dirt, and sand. Delicious, eh? We do not eat meat or dairy. That's a no-no for your compost bin. And all that without any teeth. Composting is a part of what we do so well as worms. Not only that, our poop, called castings, is a fantastic superfood for a healthy soil. A healthy or an energized soil contains a large number of organisms, and Suli and friends are grateful for Charles Darwin and soil scientists today who study the soil microbiome. Rosie helped Andrea prepare the seed packages. She carefully separated the vegetable seedlings, mindful not to disturb their tender roots. These seeds are so small. How can they grow into carrots and tall pea plants? Rosie asked Andrea. It's nature's design, Andrea replied. She put the tiny broccoli, thin carrot, and the roundish radish seeds into Rosie's hands. In contrast to the seeds in her garden, Rosie was amazed by the carrots growing in Andrea's garden. Everything they need is in the seed itself, Andrea said. Mother Earth lovingly takes care of the seeds until everything is ready. Seeds are unique like you. They grow at different speeds. Some need more light than dark to germinate, especially tiny seeds. When there is enough water, oxygen, warmth, and light, the seeds will pop and sprout within the earth. Sunlight helps a new shoot grow upwards until the stem bursts through the ground. The seed's unique life has begun. Rosie thought about this for a moment. She and the plants got energized by the sun, but in different ways. Plants and trees need the sunlight to grow through a process called photosynthesis. Rosie got her energy from the plant when she ate the food, and it all started with the sun. 
nature's magic indeed. Rosie was excited to plant the seeds in Andrea's square foot veggie garden. She wanted to throw lots of seeds in the squares, but Andrea stopped her by explaining the different ways seeds are planted. For example, one tiny broccoli seed will be planted in the middle of one square, while another 16 carat or radish seeds were planted in rows. Why do you plant like that? Rosie asked. That's a great question, Rosie, Andrea answered. In a few months, the broccoli will fill that whole space. Root crops like carrots and radishes will have room to grow underground. Rosie was amazed. She was discovering that healthy vegetables need space to grow. Next, Andre explained how she mindfully planted seeds, thanking the seeds and the soil for working together. The vegetables she grows will be rich in nutrients she needs to stay healthy. Is that like loving the seeds, Andrea? Rosie asked. Andrea smiled. Yes, Rosie, it's sending positive energy, she said, as she playfully blew a loving kiss to the seeds. Her gratitude was like a soft kiss on each seed. The seeds will take a few weeks to sprout, and most of the vegetables should be ready to harvest in a few months. Rosie and Andrea carefully finished planting the seeds and seedlings, blowing love kisses to each one. Once the seeds and plants were in the ground, the two gardeners gently watered the garden bed. Rosie's wagon was full of spinach, lettuce, and arugula Andrea had planted earlier in the spring. Andrea added a small basket of blueberries for Rosie's next smoothie. The time had come for Suli to grow into a bean plant for Andrea, Rosie, and their families. Rosie learned many things and many new garden tips from Andrea today. She was starting to realize that healthy soil plays a vital role in creating a healthy human body, as well as a ha healthy planet. After gazing around the garden, Rosie took a long, deep breath and marveled at its wonder and beauty. The buzzing insects were less of a bother now because she understood their role in creating balance and harmony in gardens everywhere. Rosie's discoveries deepened her connection with nature, the earth and the soil, as well as the food she ate. She gave Andrea a big heartfelt thank you hug. Rosie happily skipped her way back home, pulling her wagon, whistling with joy. For Rosie, it was a magical day in the garden. She couldn't wait to tell her parents everything she had learned. Tomorrow, she would help her dad make their smoothie with some of the veggies she had in her wagon. So that is a story section of Rosie and the Magical Wonders of Your Garden. The rest of the book has different information, science, nature. Uh, there's a Rosie and the Garden Center shop. And there's how the potatoes grow and how the potatoes and the plants and vegetables get the nutrients from the soil. And there's a, a little uh, question and answer. 
Hey, what did you, what have you got for lunch today? I've got leaves, stems, and flowers. What about you? A replies, sounds yummy. I've got pseudo fruits and seeds with a few stems. Can you guess what they both might be eating? And have you ever wondered what part of the vegetable are you eating? Your carrots and radishes, you're eating roots. And the lettuce and the kale and the spinach, you're eating a leaf. And when you're having celery and kohlrabi and even potatoes, you're eating a stem. And flowers, cauliflower, broccoli, and even uh, chive blossoms, those lovely purple flowers, you're eating a flower. And the fruit, like tomatoes, apples, pumpkin, peppers, and peas, you're actually eating the fruit of the plant. And the seeds, you might recognize, we've got some peanuts and sunflower seeds, even chocolate, and some parts of the corn is actually seed. So there's lots of amazing information here. What is it the butterflies like to, to land on? What do hummingbirds like to, what kind of flowers have nectar? And what about the bees? They are different pollinators. And we need them for our flowers, we need them for our vegetables. And there's even a snakes and ladders game. Look, finding out more information about mason bees. And mason bees are amazing pollinators that you can actually have in your own garden. They're just little guys. And they come out in the spring and they're only out for six, seven weeks. And then they go back and they make their tubes uh, and they lay eggs inside these tubes. So I hope you've enjoyed Rosie's Joy, the Magical Wonder is Hidden in Your Garden. And I, it's on Amazon. And I encourage you to, to pick up a copy. And if you're just a beginner guide, gardener, this is a great book to start. And even if you know something, it's also a great book to play with. So welcome to Rosie's Joy, the magical wonders hidden in your garden. Thank you so much and have fun gardening until we meet in a garden somewhere. Thank you.